pray for you. If you're grateful, put your hands together and give God praise as we stand for our morning hymn. Glory to his name. Come on, put your hands together. Let's have a little church this morning. Down at the cross, oh, down at the cross, where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin, I cried, oh, there to my heart, what the 
blood of life singing glory to his name oh i'm singing glory to his name come on precious name singing glory to his name oh there to my heart was the blood Singing glory to His name. Oh, I am so one justly saved from my sin. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus so sweet, He abides within. Oh, there at the cross, yeah, where He took me in. Singing glory. Somebody give glory to his name. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand. Give God a hand, somebody. Amen. 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 Welcome, everyone, to this first Sunday after Christmas. I pray that everyone had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas uh, day with your families and your friends. Everybody stayed safe and uh, just had a good time. You know, it is uh, such a blessing to be here and, and to be able to worship with you all once again uh, this, uh, this Sunday morning. And um, so I just wanted to, uh, it's just so good to see everybody uh, here today. You know, we can't take this for granted, right? We can't take this for granted. This is, this is a, a blessing, it's a gift a gift from God to be able to stand before you uh, just one more time. Um, 
So I welcome you all. I welcome you all to the matchless, uh, to this, uh, to this uh, congregation of service this morning in the matchless name of Jesus. And we just pray that the Spirit will lead us and guide us through this, this service Amen. today and that we would have a good time in the name of the Lord. It is so good to see uh, to, to, to see to see some some folk that I haven't seen in, in some time. We have some of our young folk that are back from college and and different things, and it's just uh, it's just a very good good thing to be able to look out and to see everyone. Um, I would like to uh, to make a an announcement uh, this morning um, that it is with uh, profound sadness that we announce the passing of our. Dear Sister Donna Wayman, um, who was the beloved mother of Sister Tanika Williams and Brother Keith Williams and the daughter of our very own Deaconess Gertrude Daler, Daly and the sister of Rhonda, Tammy, um, Brother Tony Daly and Charles Daly. And we would ask that you all would please keep the entire family in your prayers and the service is yet to be uh, announced the time of the service but we will make sure that we keep you all informed of that when it comes about um, for our other announcements uh, thank you for your continued support of this ministry uh, we very much appreciate your generosity <coughs> throughout the year um, your generous giving allows us to continue to bless others in so many many wonderful ways. So as a, as a reminder, there are seven ways to, uh, to give to support our ministry here at Metropolitan. You can either mail in your offerings to us at 548 Queenstown Road in Severn. You can drive by the church and drop your offerings off at the church's drop box on the finance door room. You can pay with your PayPal account from Metropolitan's website's donation button. Uh, you may also pay through your personal bank. You can give by using the Givelify app or use the Cash app. And for all of you who are here in attendance with us at our worship service, of course, you may leave your offering in the offering box. Um, I would also like to mention that um, we were blessed with a, a gift of $5,000 from the Anderson Fire Protection um, Incorporated of Elkridge, Maryland. This was Anderson's way of recognizing the work of Metropolitan's food pantry. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a such a tremendous <laughs> gift. We would like to thank them so much uh, for that. And because of this uh, unexpected blessing, the best United Methodist Church on Queenstown Road <laughs> was able to pay it forward um, this uh, Christmas Eve by distributing 50 hams to anyone who came. Uh, we were also pleased to have delegates uh, Mark Chan and Delegate Mike Rogers on hand to assist in that uh, distribution. Um, we were, and I'll just tell you how God works. Uh, there was a gentleman who came from a, another church Miss Wendy, Wendy knows the name. I'm not putting you on the spot, Miss Wendy, but I know you, you were familiar. Do you remember the name of the church? I know it was on Ritchie Highway, right? Say it one more time. Herndale Presbyterian Church. That was it. That was it. Um, uh, hold on now. It's all right. We got it. I got to catch you, Miss Odessa. Wait a minute. I got to do some work. I got to do some technical work right now. A little better, or do we need to? Okay, amen. Uh, see, I, I had to take my cues. See, I got to watch in the back. I got to see what's going on back here. See what? Let me, <laughs> let me, let me cut Jason off real quick, because um, I actually wanted to talk about the ham giveaway, um, and I'm gonna be quick. I'm gonna be real quick. Just slide me over a little bit. Just slide me over a little bit. I wait. Thank you all, um, because I don't do this often, but I'm gonna do it this time. Um, I, I don't. I don't like to give out personal recognition or pat people on the back because I don't. I, I believe when we come here to help, we do it not for recognition, but we just do it because we understand that we are to serve. But in all honesty, I want to tell you um, from the bottom of 
my heart from the bottom of the church's heart, I would like to thank Miss Pat. And um, I would like, if, if I forget somebody, Miss Pat, then you tell me. I would like to thank, um, I'm looking around, uh, Jason Jr., Sandy, and Jason Sr. <laughs> um, I would like to thank Miss Wendy, um, Denise, um, Miss Genevieve, who I forget. Liz and Liz, and I think that was it, correct? I believe, yes. Um, we had a real good time. You all, I'm gonna tell you, you all think it's fun coming to this kind of stuff and, and service. It's better when you come in small groups. You really learn and have a good time with your people. Um, I've never laughed so hard in all my life. Um, Sister Sandy went out on the corner. Um, she showed us her corner, her, her corner uh, personality um, and how, you know, she, she was familiar with the corner. Now y'all done cut my head off. Thank you. Um, and then we got down to about five or six hams, Aaron, and I had to show them urban ministry at its best. Um, we, we set up behind the church, so that means people had to know it. Um, but it was, uh, it was getting late and it was time to go. And urban ministry means you meet the people where the people at. So the pastor politely began to step out in the traffic and stop cars. To which my member said, no, no, pastor, be careful, be careful. I was like, excuse me, this is how we do ministry in the city. Um, you go out to the people, and that's how we got rid of all the hams. Um, and it was a blessing to hear the, me the member of um, Herndale um, Presbyterian, who was very honest to say, I was driving by, and I don't need a ham, but our church needs a ham. To which the good members of Metropolitan said, well, how many hams do you need? And he said about 20 pounds. But he said, oh, but this one just means that's one less that I have to purchase. Um, I'm sorry, don't move, I'll come back down. And then by the end of it, when he turned around, when he was on his way to his car, the good people from the Best United Methodist Church had four more hams for him. Because see, the thing about it is when you get blessed unexpectedly, then it's really your job to bless somebody else unexpectedly. Yes, sir. And I pray that although this was our first annual, we do not stop. Because um, I just believe that the more we give, the more the Lord is going to give back to us. And I, I just think it's a good thing when you can do things to let people know that even on Christmas Eve, we still thought it not robbery to come out and do the best we could to bless somebody else. So thank you all. Um, I can tell you all, I'm not sure why. I, I, I told my family this. I told Miss Pat this. I don't know why I was so tired on Christmas because we really didn't. We were only here for a couple of hours. Um, it shouldn't have worn me out like that, but I slept real good on Christmas. Maybe Miss um, Wendy can probably hear me because I don't have any little ones. Amen. Running around. I ain't have to worry about nobody jumping up saying open up the presents. Nothing. And I just believe, see, in my house, when your four-legged child wants to sleep, you keep right on sleeping with him. So the longer he slept, the longer we slept. Amen. Um, but in all honesty, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Um, I am so glad that the Lord has brought us through another year, and we are here once again. Um, Jason, I know I cut you off. Were there any other announcements? Yes, uh, just the, uh, the changes in the prayer line. Um, there are changes in the prayer line, effective January the 6th uh, for our Thursday prayer line. The 12 noon prayer line will be available by way of Zoom, so that is going to be a change effective January 6th. So if you'd like to lead uh, one of these weekly prayer sessions, also please let the church office know and the Zoom call-in and log-in information is uh, listed. And if there's anyone who would like to lead the prayer line in prayer, um, please either send an email to the church or call the church or let Ms. Pat know or let myself know. Um, also, we have lined up so far, I believe I have four months already, it's January through April. We'll be having guest preachers and guest churches on the prayer line with us. Um, every fourth Thursday, we, I'm doing all I can to invite someone. Um, an invitation has been sent out to the DS, and she is checking her schedule, and she is going to get back to us. And the final thing that I was going to say is, um, yeah, I think that might have been it about the prayer line. Um, anyone who will be interested. No, it's not. The food pantry. The food pantry is the third Thursday and the third Friday. <clears throat> 
the third Thursday and the third Friday, but sometimes the second Thursday, depending when the third Friday. See how they cut me off or they ain't let me finish. Um, on, on the Thursdays before the third Friday, we pack everything. On the third Fridays, we distribute everything. And if there's anyone who would like to help, um, y'all was, was tearing me down up in here. I mean, that ain't a good way to come in, in church after Christmas, is it? Uh, huh? We, yes, we, um, we, yeah, we. Um, because the thing is, um, the one thing, and, I, and I'm saying this because this is a plea. This is a plea from the pastor. Um, it, it, the food pantry is a metropolitan food pantry, which means we need to start stepping up to the plate if we are available. Um, I will be the first one to tell you that no, I do all I can to not show up because I do enough. However, um, don't, be, don't be surprised in 2022 when the pastor comes walking in and then when the pastor starts saying, let's do some stuff, don't look at me like I'm crazy. And if I come in and I bring people with me, don't look surprised. Um, they've been asking for some other help. And I realize a lot of us are back to work and we are not able to help because we are at work. But for those of us who have the time, I ask that if you can, if you can give 15 minutes, if you can give a half an hour, if you can give an hour, it will be more probably than what they have been getting. So as 2022 comes in, I want all of us to be under the mindset that we are here to serve and to not be served and yes, the pastor will be showing up. I can't promise every month. I cannot promise every month because eventually I'm gonna let you all know what my schedule really looks like. Um, I, I do church stuff, but I have a lot of personal stuff going on as well. Um, so I, I, I run myself a little too much and sometimes I just gotta, I've learned to say no. But in 2022, I, I, I'm making a promise to the food pantry that you will see me more than you saw me in 2021. Which means, Kip, if I show up one time, I've already made a difference. Amen. 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 Come on, Sheldon. Give us a song. Give us a song. Can we sing this song? Children go where I send thee. Shall I send thee? I'm gonna send thee one by one, one for the little bitty baby was born of the virgin. Mary was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Now children go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? I'm gonna send thee two by two, two for Paul and Silas, and one for the little bitty baby was born of the virgin. Mary was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Now children go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? I'm gonna send thee three by three, three for the Hebrew children and two for Paul and Silas and one was the little bitty baby was born of the virgin. Mary was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Now children go where I send thee. Oh, I'm gonna send the four by four, four for the four that stood at the door, and three for the Hebrew children, and two for Paul and Silas, and one was the itty bitty baby was born of the virgin. Mary was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Now children go where I send thee. I'm going to send thee five by five, five for the gospel preachers and four for the four that stood at the door and three for the Hebrew children and two for Paul and Silas and one was the itty bitty baby was born of the virgin. Mary was born, born, born in Bethlehem. 
Bethlehem. Now, children, go where I send thee. Lord, how shall I send thee? We're going to sing. I'm going to send thee six. Six for the six that could get fixed. And five for the gospel preacher. And four for the four that stood at the door. And three for the Hebrew children. And two for Paul and Silas. And one for the little bitty baby was born of the virgin. Mary was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Now children go where I send thee. Seven. I'm going to send these seven by seven. Seven for the seven that couldn't get to heaven. And six for the six that couldn't get fixed. And five for the gospel preacher. Then four for the four that stood at the door. And three for the Hebrew children. And two for Paul and Silas. And one was the itty bitty baby was born of the virgin. Mary was born, born, born in Bethlehem. All right, so y'all know I'm going to mess with Sheldon. You know it was eight. It was nine. Nine. It's ten. I'm just messing with y'all, but <laughs> how, how many people know that song? We did it before. So, so. Yeah. You're just not familiar with the words, right. so I, I promise you next year we'll, we'll make it a selection and we'll put the words up so we can all. Now, if I had to ask you, which, which category would you like to have been in? <laughs> See, now I'm going to make y'all think. Well, Because six couldn't get fixed. Or oh, you won't be all of them. Six couldn't get fixed. So you be that? <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind being the one that got the, one of the six that couldn't get fixed. Cause I know I need to to really get some fixing. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind being one of the four that stood at the door. Come on, sir. Come on. Definitely would love to have been one of the three Hebrew boys. Yeah. Wouldn't mind being Paul and Silas either. Yeah. Cause you know Paul and Silas found themselves in the dungeon in the midnight hour. Eight stood at the gate. Miss Jeanette remembered that. Yeah. Seven did all they could to get to heaven. I got some people in here that's in the, the number seven because we're doing all we can to get to heaven. See, I, I say all this because y'all got to remember it's the last Sunday of the year. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. And it's not too late to get yourself straight <laughs> before we step into 2022. Uh, see, I, I just think that um, in 2022, I, I know some people don't want to hear this. But in order to make the church the church of Christ, sometimes you got to be willing to do a new thing. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I don't know what the new thing is, but I pray that the Lord will allow us to see it. And I just think what's wrong with some people is when we here do a new thing, we're afraid that means we're going to leave the old thing behind. But... I need y'all to understand amazing grace, how sweet the sound will always be amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We may just have to do a new thing with it. I, this is what I'm trying to tell you all. Um, I think maybe in here right now, I'm going to, yeah, okay, that's an easy one, yeah. Amorous is the youngest, correct? Right, somebody's beeping. Okay, all right, I just want to make sure nobody's, and, and what I'm trying to say to you all that you might not want to hear or believe is in order for us to keep Amherst in the doors, in order for us to keep Amherst coming to church, Amherst is going to want to hear a new swing to Amazing Thing, to Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, because she's not even understanding what Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound is just yet, so you got to figure out a new way to give it to her, um, and, and uh, okay, I'm going to save it for later, um, because I can see you all looking at me now going, here he go with this crazy mess again. But I want you all to know that I know that I know that I know that amazing grace, how sweet the sound is not what got me into the doors of the church. It was because I was blessed enough to go to a church 
that understood if they wanted me to stay there, they better give me something that I would find some comfort in. And uh, what a friend we have in Jesus didn't do it. Um, great is thy faithfulness didn't do it. Blessed assurance Jesus' is mine didn't do it. Um, um, I need thee every hour didn't do it. It'll do it for me now, Miss Genevieve. You know, it, it, it'll make me understand it now. But, but back then I had to hear um, a song like, Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus, the way James Cleveland did it. Because it made me want to tap my foot and come back. And I guess what I'm saying, I can talk to, let me see, maybe Aaron will understand it. Um, Jason Jr.'s parents in here, so I don't want to put him on the spot. And Gene and Malik, your parents, I don't want to put you in the spot. But Aaron and I, we old enough. We, I'm older than she is. But in other words, when you, when you gave me a song like that, it made me think I was still where I was on Saturday. See, it's for some of us, that's been a long time. But, but from what I heard, Nat, y'all knew something about red hats, and, and y'all said that was a good time. And when people come to the church, they sometimes need something that's going to make them come back in. And sometimes I, I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings on the last Sunday of the year. But from what they told me when I went to school is if it don't hurt, it's not worth saying it. If we keep only giving people amazing grace, how sweet the sound and blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. We're going to get the same kind of people. So you got to learn. We got to learn to look at the younger people and ask, what is it that we can give you? What is it that we can do that will make you want to come in and then take over? Because all of us weren't in positions of leadership when we were 13, 14, and 15. Maybe some of us were. I can tell you I wasn't. It took something else to make me understand what church was all about. I can tell you all now, we, because I'm still talking, we're going to skip some stuff so we can hurry up and get out. Because I know some of y'all want to go home and you're probably going to the store to get some good deals because it's after Christmas. That's when I go shop and praise the Lord. Um, but I say all this to tell you that um, I really believe in the bottom of my heart that there's about to be something that's going to happen on Queenstown Road. But in the order for it to happen, we got to be willing to happen. I got three yeses. Yeah. That's all I needed. Yeah. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. That's all I needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we got to understand that the same way somebody took some time to figure out what would keep us in the church is the same way we got to take the time to figure out what's going to keep them in the church. Because what I do understand is that every day the Lord allows me to get up again, I'm getting closer and closer to my goal. But I want somebody else to be here when I'm gone. I think, Miss Geraldine, I think we have the scriptures now. So you can you come on up. I'm going to shut on up. And I, I, just, I just need y'all to understand that. We, I love the old songs, too. It's what, it's what gets me through now. But I can tell you there was a time when Kirk Franklin got me more into the church than the old songs. I can tell you John P. Key got me in the church more than the old songs. I can tell you Fred Hammond made me want to go to church because because Fred Hammond told me Jesus be a fence yeah. but he sung it a different way he put a new spin on it that made me want to sing it no matter where I was you know it, it's good to sing um let me think and then I'm shutting up Miss Joe I thought go ahead Miss Joe I'm, I'm getting out your way I thought you were there that's why well, I turned around um I'm making my way this way I gotta make a run um I gotta get something but but I say that to tell you all that you can take any church song Put it to something and get young people involved. Um, let me see, who can I put on the spot that won't get mad? Oh yeah, Gina won't get mad. What's your favorite song, Gina? Don't tell me no church song either. Okay, because there's so many, right? But if we took your, fir your favorite song and threw, uh, threw some words in it like Jesus is all the world to me, you would know the song automatically because it made you think about the other song, correct? correct that's how you catch young people i told you all church folks say when i think about jesus and what he's done for me when i think about jesus and how he set me free i can dance 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 all night young people say i'm gonna dance my pain away it's the same thing it's just a different see yeah y'all know about that yeah amen I'm, I'm finished until the sermon i'm finished good morning 
I'll be reading for you the New Testament coming from Colossians. Chapter 3, <coughs> verse 12 to 17. Amen. And it reads, <coughs> Therefore, woof, I rebuke you, Satan. <coughs> Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Amen. close yourself yes. with compassion, yes, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, but with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have any grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which bind them all together in perfect unity. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through song, hymns, and songs of spirit. Sing it to God with gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, whether it's word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The next reading will be coming from the gospel. Would you please stand? I'll be reading Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. And it reads, Every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the, the, the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents was returning home, the boy, Jesus, stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were not aware of it, thinking he was in the company they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among the their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone heard him, was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I had been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and one, 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 one. But his mother treasures all things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Jesus, oh, the wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild. New life, we hope to all we bring to listen to the angels sing glory, glory, glory to the new born king. Come on, church, oh, Jesus. 
Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so holy. Make him mine. New life, new hope to all that he brings. Listen to the angels sing glory. He was harrowed by the angels, born in a lonely manger. The Virgin Mary was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father. Three wise men came from afar. They were guided by a shining star. Oh, to see King Jesus where he laid in a manger, filled with hair. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, oh, the wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild. Oh, you like it, you hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels say, glory, glory, glory to the new born king. Listen, oh, he was heralded by the angels. Manger. Oh, the Virgin Mary was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father. All oh, those wise men came from afar, they were guided by a shining star. Oh, to see King Jesus where he laid in a manger, filled with hay. I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child! Jesus. Jesus, so holy, meek and mild, new life, new hope, to all that he brings, this son, to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory to the new born. Listen while I tell you about Jesus, 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 born in a manger, Jesus, Jesus. New life, new hope, say new life, new hope to all he bring. Listen to the angels sing glory, glory, glory to the new born King. King. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. And I wonder if we sitting here, if we listening, if we watching this morning, can we then just sing a little bit of, oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Can we lift our hands and say together, oh come, oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore him. Oh come, let us adore. One last time. For he alone is worthy. For he The Lord. 
Amen. Yeah, Amen. Worthy. Amen. This this morning, um, by the clock I'm looking at, it is almost 10:45. I am giving Brother Melvin the right to wave his hands at five of five of. Um, if I'm still up here, Amen. Which means at five of, you're gonna get two more minutes. Two more minutes. Um, this morning, um, I, I, I want to look at that second chapter of Luke, but I want to look at verses 36 and 38. I want to look at verses 36 and 38. And I'm reading from the Message Bible this morning, reading from the Message. And in the Message, it is written this way, Anna the prophetess was also their daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher. She was by now a very old woman. She had been married seven years and a widow for 84. She never left the temple area, worshiping night and day with her fastings and prayers. At the very time Simeon was praying, she showed up broke into an anthem of praise to God and talked about the child to all who were waiting expectantly for the freeing of Jerusalem. My brothers and sisters, the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God, thanks be to God. And before I came this morning, uh, Miss Pat, I made sure I did a little bit of research so I would have this right, but I believe now this is week 92. I think this is week 92. But I went a little further because week 92 means that for 638.75 days, we have been doing this this way. But Cindy, I went a little further because that means for 15,000 330 hours we have been doing a new thing and the blessing is it's been still giving us the same results in other words even though we change some stuff I can still come in here on Sunday and know that when I leave I should and I ought to feel better 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 and just in case you're wondering, I can tell you I already feel better than when I came in. Uh, and just in case I got some of my folks who either are listening or sitting here who said, why doesn't this sound familiar? I'm going to just tell you, yes, it's the same thing I preached the last Sunday last year. Because here's the thing, we still in the same place. But I'm going to give it to you in a different way, in a different way. So just for no more than 12 minutes, and even if I'm not finished, uh, Malik, I'm going to sit down when 12 minutes hits. So if I don't get finished, y'all will have to call me and ask me what was left. But I want y'all to know that in hearing what we heard this morning, there ought to be a few people that I think we need to take some time out to discuss. Uh, first, there is Jesus, who at this time is a child and is about to make an appearance in the temple. Uh, then, of course, his parents, uh, a man named Simeon, who was righteous and a devout and who looked forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him. Now, just in case somebody thought I made a mistake, no, I'm not saying his, his dad was, 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 that Simeon was his parent. We all know who Jesus' parents were, right? Okay, amen. All right, so when I started talking about Simeon, I was talking about, but I should have explained that because everybody may not be where I am. So let me go back and say, then, of course, his parents, Mary and Joseph. And then there was also a man in the temple uh, in, in this text named Simeon who was righteous and devout and looked forward to the consolation of Israel. And it was said that the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him, Simeon, by the Holy Spirit that he, Simeon, would not see death 
before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And finally, there was a woman named Anna, a prophet, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. So for any of my mathematicians in here, we know she was at least 91, right? I'm sure she was a little older. But here's the part I like because it says she never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and praying night and day. Now, um, earlier we heard when Ms. Geraldine um, read that when Jesus' parents came to find him and they found him in the temple, he basically asked them, why are you look looking for me? Don't you know I have to be about my father's business? And now here's Anna, who never left the temple, but worshiped there night and day. So, so as we can see, I, I, I'd like to suggest that there were some big wigs. There were some important people. There were some VIPs and CEOs in the temple. And although I think all of them are important, I just want us to look at how two of them acted. And, and the thing I believe about these two is they did the same thing, had the same reaction, if you will, in the temple. Because the text says that guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. Likewise, Anna, who never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and praying night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child. And this morning, this last Sunday of the year, unfortunately, another year that we can say, Lord willing, when we step into the new year, that has been like no other, a year uh, where a lot of people unfortunately have gone on to be with the Lord, I'd like to say that in the midst of our smiles, in the midst of our tears, I believe that we still got a right and a reason to praise him. See, both Simeon and Anna took time to give him praise when they found themselves in his presence. And I want to ask you, how about us this morning? I'm sure there were a whole lot of us that were praising him yesterday when we opened up a box. Well, we were praising somebody. We may not have been praising him, but we opened up a box and got that gift that we had been wanting forever. And we were hoping and praying and praying and hoping and hoping and praying that somebody was going to get that gift for us. Um, but I, I just wonder if when we got up this morning, did we take a little bit of time just to say thank you? Did we, did, did we stop just to, to praise him? And when we saw that our families had made it through the night, did we take some time out just to praise him? When, when we saw there was a little bit of food on the table, whether it was Apple Jacks, Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes, eggs and bacon, grits, whatever it was that you like to eat in the morning, did we take a little bit of time just to praise him? When we walked to the closet and opened it up and saw we still had an outfit for this morning, did we take a little bit of time to praise him? With all the stuff and with all the mess that we've been going through this year, all of the things we've had to adjust to. Isn't it good to know that we are still here? And I believe that if the Lord has kept us another year. See, I, I, on this day, um, if you don't get it, Simeon and Anna were in the right place at the right time. 
And this morning, although he was only a child, I guess they were reminded, uh, as the psalmist said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Anna, who was in the temple both day and night, some of us try to act like we're in the temple both day and night. But when we walk into the temple, never ever open up our mouths to say one single thank you. But I've got a message for you this morning on the last Sunday of the old year, about to be the new year. If nothing else, when we step into 2022, be it the Lord's will, can we be like Anna? Maybe not hang out in the temple all day and night, but at least have a word of praise and thanksgiving on our lips at all times. Because if the Lord stopped by and woke us up, we've got something to be thankful about. See, although they were there for different reasons, their reaction was the same. Simeon, who was guided by the Spirit, went into the temple. Because he had been promised he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Anna, who never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. What is our reaction when we realize that we're in the presence of Christ? See, you all open up some presents. P-R-E-P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. But Michelle, how many of us were in the presence? P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. I'd rather be in his presence than get a present because I believe that his presence was the best present that I ever could have received in my life. Uh, this year may not have gone the way we would have liked for it to. We may have lost some loved ones along the way, but I still know that I know that I know that I know earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Yes, we all may not physically be in the building, but thanks be to God, we've been able to add some technology, improve our technology, and allow anybody who wants to hear the name of Jesus on Sunday morning to click a button and tune on in. I need to ask you all this. How can we not praise him when scripture says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. In other words, by the clock, Malik, I think I got two minutes because Brother Melvin didn't wave his hands, I, but I'm paying attention this morning. I, I can't speak for anybody else, Nat, but as for me and my house, not only will we serve him, but we're going to do all we can to praise him every chance we get. See, young people, you, not might, you might not get this right now, but eventually when you get to our age, you'll understand that if and when you see a box underneath the tree with your name on it, you better thank the Lord that the Lord allowed somebody to think so much of you to wrap a box and put it under the tree. But here's a little bit more for you. When you get to the box, before you open it, because see, some of you all have these real specific gifts that you ask for. You know how y'all do. I, I like an iPhone 25, even though that ain't even out yet. But I say this, if you get a phone that can dial, you better thank the Lord. If you get a phone that can do some texting and allow you to have um, some media and all that foolishness on it, because I believe that technology, unfortunately, okay, I got one minute and 30 seconds. I'm going to talk to my own older for people now. See, young people couldn't live in our time because we had to walk around with a quarter and we had to go to the pay phone and we couldn't look at the phone and know the number. If you didn't know what your number was, you weren't going to make a phone call. But now, because technology has stepped in, we can scroll through our contact list and hit the call the person. No, nah, when you had that quarter in your hand, the payphone didn't have no contact list on the side. Your brain had to kick in and you had to remember the number. I remember my parents always told me, if you don't know anything else, no one phone number when you go out in the street, because that may have be the number you got to call. And I know for a fact, because unfortunately, no, fortunately, I have a 28-year-old and I know one day his phone was broke. And I said, well, why didn't you call? And 
he said, my phone was broke. I said, I understand your phone was broke, but why didn't you call? I couldn't remember the number. Well, isn't it good to know that when we find ourselves in trouble, Angie, we've got a phone number that we can call at any time. And I don't know about you, but I don't even have to put it in my contact list because all I've got to do is go somewhere, fall down on my knees, stretch out my hands, look to the hills, and say, Father, I come to you as humbly as I can. I just want to praise you for a little while because the one good thing, I got 30 seconds, the one good thing about a Jesus that I understand and know is that all I got to do is give him a five-second prayer and he'll give me a 20-minute praise. What do you mean by that in other words if I got up on thank on Christmas if I just said Lord thank you for another day when I stepped out and I saw that my family was safe when I stepped out and I saw that my friends were safe when I stepped out and I realized even though some of my loved ones have gone on to be with him they're in a better place now than they were when they were here it gave me an opportunity to praise the Lord for a little while I'm not bringing no baggage in the 2022 I'm trying to come in with a clean slate. So on January 1st, 2022, I got five seconds. I'm going to come in with a grateful heart. I'm going to come in with a little more love on my mind. I'm going to come in with a little more hope, a little more joy, a little more praise, a little more thanksgiving, because I understand the only way I can make it in this world is if I take a little bit of time to praise the Lord. And that's all I came to let y'all know. Some of us are walking around like we zombies because we had the way on the Delta. Soon I guess they're going to have Iota and Epsilon and, and Gamma and all the way through. But I'm going to just keep trusting in the Lord. Um, it's not over. We thinking it's over. But we still see people dying every day. So what I tell us is keep our faith in God but also do what we need to do. See, if the Lord said, look, I, I, I'm, I, unfortunately something is coming, and in order for us to get through it, you gotta put a mask on, then put on a mask. Cause then when I put the mask on, I can thank the Lord for allowing me to even be able to have a mask in the first place. <laughs> there may be someone who does not know Jesus for the pardoning of their sins. There may be someone who is looking for a church home. I'm a rem reminder that we will be having New Year's Eve watch night service at 7 um, p.m. on New Year's Eve. We will send out um, an invite, and you all are more than welcome to send it to any of your friends and family members who may want to attend. The other thing I need to say is um, we're going to do all we can to try to keep these poinsettias until, or poinsettias, however you all prefer to say it, until next Sunday. So you all go home and pray that we can keep these looking halfway decent for another week. And then next Sunday, without fighting, without fighting, we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18 um, flowers that need a home. Um, and, one, and the home will not be mine. So we got 18 that can go out. I just ask when you take them, please leave the pans. Don't take the clear dishes because we recycle. Amen. Praise the Lord. And sometimes they're hard to find. So as always, God bless you. We're going to do one more other thing. Um, I'm going to ask Jason to come back up, and it's, we, I, know we, I know we didn't pray, but I did it on purpose. We're going to have a prayer now because, again, this is the last Sunday in 2021. So we're going to pray now, and then we're going to get ready to go out of this place. And I, and I also ask that when the benediction has been done, don't move. I got a couple questions I need to ask you all, please. Thank you. Amen. Let us all look to the Lord. Most gracious, holy, and everlasting God, we thank you. We thank you for everything, my God. We thank you for all of the good. We thank you for the bad. We just thank you for just allowing us to, to be in your presence, Father God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have allowed us to come to present our petitions to you, Lord God. We are able to walk up the mountain ourselves and present ourselves to you. And for that, we thank you. 
Father God, we know that it is you and you alone that separates us from the life that we have today in absolute and total destruction. And we thank you for holding on to us and keeping us, Lord God. Father, we understand that it is not because we are that good, but it is because that you are good. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all of those in the world who are facing sickness and sadness and pain and homelessness. People in the world, Lord God, who have nothing to eat. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, that you would forgive us, Lord God, for taking those very things for granted. We have so much to be grateful for. And above all things, Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son. And that through his suffering and his death and resurrection, and ascension, Lord God. That we can cling to the hope and the understanding that we have been granted the gift of everlasting life. And so because of that, Heavenly Father, at the end of the day, we have nothing to worry about. We have absolutely nothing in the world to worry about. For Father, we rise above all of the foolishness and, and all of the heartache and all of the pain and all of the suffering, Heavenly Father, and we cling to you. For what is in you that we find our hope. It is in you that we find our joy and our happiness. Not in the happenings that are in the world, Lord God, but it is in you that we find these things. But yet and still, Heavenly Father, we need you. We need your strength. Because we often get deceived, Heavenly Father, into thinking that the things that happen to us in this world have some type of power in order to determine how we are to feel. But we know today that those things have no power. Not the things that we deal with in life. They have no power. Because the finished work in you, Christ Jesus, have given us the victory over all of those things that we deal with in life. Father God, we ask that you bless the leaders of the world. Help them, Heavenly Father, to think not on their own things that they want for themselves, Lord God, but that they do the things that are right by the people that they serve. We pray for the President of this United States. We pray that, Lord God, that he will continue to, to walk according to your will and that you will speak to him, Lord God. And that he will make decisions that are pleasing in your sight. We ask that you bless all of those in the members of Congress. Whether they be Democrat or Republican or Independent. Because you, Lord God, can penetrate their hearts. And help them, Lord God. To do the things that are right. To make the decisions that are right for your people. We ask that you would bless the leaders of the church especially our own pastor, Lord God. Strengthen him, prop him up on every leaning side. Strengthen him, Lord God, wherever it is that he is weak. Fill him, Lord God, with your spirit that he may lead your people in the way that you would have us to go. And Father God, we offer ourselves to you to build with us and to do with us whatever it is that you want to, God. Relieve us of any bondages of self that we may better do your will. And take away our difficulties, our pain, our sadness, Lord God. That victory over them may bear witness to those that we would help of your love, your power, and your way of life. 
and grant us strength right now, Father God, as we go forth from here to do your bidding. In the precious name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Um, from, as always, the best United Methodist Church on Queenstown Road, we pray that if it be the Lord's will, we'll either see you on New Year's Eve or we will see you next Sunday on the first Sunday of the new year. Um, be blessed. God keep you and God continue to smile upon you until we meet again. Amen. I'm looking for a miracle. I beg the impossible. I see the impossible. And I feel the intangible. I'm looking for a miracle. Just believe.